happy Sunday. It's me, Natasha, back again. I wanted to share with you another tip around the kitchen. Uh, last week we chatted about knives, so this week I wanted to talk about another essential in the kitchen that you use all the time, which are your pots and pans. And like with knives, you can buy them in sets and they come with tons of pans and pots that you might not actually need or not quite sure how you're supposed to use. So I wanted to go over today which ones that you'll actually need to use and how to get the best results out of your pots and pans so you know which job to use which pot and pan for so that you don't end up with big messes. Um, my husband this week, he actually uh, was using one of the, the pans to make some grits and ended up, it stuck to the entire pan. And obviously not the right pan for the job so um, it's, it makes it a lot easier when you use the right pan in terms of both getting the right results as well as the cleanup afterwards so I'm gonna share with you guys which pots and pans um, are essential and basically I'm just gonna go over five there's tons of options and you will grow your collection as you cook more in the kitchen but these will just be like the five basics ones that you will need the most often and are a really great starting place if you're just starting out in the kitchen or if you're trying to kind of clean out your kitchen because you've got collected so many things over the years these are the ones that you'll really want to use that are absolutely essential so um, where are we starting? So first, the things first, before we get into the pans, I want to talk about just buying pots and pans and what you should know with that. Um, first off, it's great to invest in good pots and pans because it will affect the end result that you get on the um, other side with the food and how it turns out. So you really want to get good quality pots and pans and that comes with two things to keep in mind. First, you want to think about good construction and second, you want to think about good material. So with construction, you want to make sure that the pots and pans are um, solid, that they're not going to fall apart. They, You want to look for riveted or welded together parts like the handles are riveted or welded onto the actual pot or pan so that they can stand being lifted up and filled with heavy foods and things like that so they're not going to fall apart on you over the years. And the other thing is good materials. You want to make sure that your pots and pans are going to last for the long haul. So looking for pots and pans that are made out of solid materials. And there's lots of good options there. Um, so you don't have to stick to just one brand or does it have to be the most expensive one you just really want to make sure that they will last a long haul because you don't want to buy pots and pans that are going to fall apart in a few years um, I remember when I first got my first set of pots and pans I just had like a set of tea fall pots and pans and I use those for absolutely everything and it worked okay for most jobs it's really great for cooking eggs because it has te it's made with teflon but not so great for some other things like if you're trying to sear a steak or chicken or something like that so um that's something to keep in mind is um, as we'll talk about today is making sure you get the right pan for the right job so um now let's actually get into what are the pots and pans that are essential for you to have in the kitchen so the first and foremost most important one that you'll want to start off with is a saute pan this is also called a frying pan or a stainless steel pan. Um, this is the most important one. This is pretty much like your multitasker that can do a lot of different jobs in the kitchen. And the things, um, the kind of qualities you will look for in a saute pan, you'll notice it has a flat bottom, completely flat. It'll have a handle and uh, a long handle. It will have sides that are relatively tall and straight. And the things that this helps with is um, when you're cooking with this kind of pan, it doesn't have slope sides so the food doesn't fall towards the center all the time. You can move things around in the pot. They'll stay placed where you put them. You'll also get really good even consistent heat across the bottom because it has a flat bottom on this pot. And so what you would use this for, um, lots of different jobs in the kitchen. You can use this for searing, you can use this for braising, um, you would use this for if you do like one pot meals, this is really great. Anything that's saucy, it really helps it has tall sides. You can create like a steak in here, you could sear the steak and then afterward make the sauce in the same pot because the sides are tall enough so that it won't make a big mess as you are cooking um, the sauce afterwards. So the saute pan is a super important one. I think it's a great place for you to start. You want to look for one that's probably about 10 to 12 inches in diameter so that you have enough room to fit all the ingredients into one pan so if you were like sauteing um, some vegetables and things like that you'll have enough room in this pot to fit everything in there you don't have to worry about it becoming too crowded or not being able to cook quickly enough because everything's on top of each other 
So that's what you want to look for. And then also having a lid is really helpful because if you're going to do something braised, um, you can put the lid on top. And the nice thing about going with stainless steel is that it can go from the stove top into the oven. So if you want to pan sear your steak and then finish it off in the oven with the stainless steel, it can do both. Um, it can, if you want to take it to the table, so it can, it's very versatile. It can do everything um, that you need in terms of being able to accommodate all the different kinds of heat. Um, the stainless steel can also sit on the stove top for a while so you don't have to worry about um, being able to cook on the stove top if you want something to sit and simmer for a long period of time the stainless steel can do that as well so this is really like I said an essential one this is a really great place to start with and um, it'll do a lot of different jobs and the other nice thing about stainless steel is it's non-reactive so um, some kinds of metals like copper or aluminum they'll react when you mix them with acidic ingredients but the stainless steel you can mix it with acids tomato juice lemon juice vinegar all those different things it won't change the taste of your food or the color of your food so that's something also important to know is if you're looking at getting a frying pan aluminum and copper they can change the um, taste of your food and the look of your food you might you probably don't want that so um, stainless steel is a really good option for that but one thing to know is stainless steel is not a non-stick material it is porous so the way that you can prevent your stainless steel pot from from everything sticking to the bottom of it is you want to heat your pan before you get cooking so you'll put it on the heat and let it warm up first and you want to give that a few minutes for the pan itself to warm up then you can add your butter or your oil or whatever swirl that around in the pan and let it warm up as well and then add your food the warming process of letting the pan warm up actually allows the um, the the steel to expand and as it expands it closes up those pores and that makes sure that the food stays on top and not inside the pores of your pan and so that can prevent things from sticking to the bottom of your pan so really important to preheat whenever you're using stainless steel and that will make sure that you don't end up with a sticky mess on the bottom of your pan cool so the next thing um, as we're talking about stick and non-stick the next kind of pan that you want is a non-stick skillet um, a non-stick skillet is super helpful in the kitchen, especially if you eat eggs, which we eat a whole lot of eggs at our house. And um, the stainless, uh, sorry, the non-stick uh, skillet is really great for anything that is sticky or um, gooey, like cheese, or if you're making like crepes and eggs, frittata, anything that might have a uh, little feet that try to stick onto things, that's what your um, your non-stick skillet is really, really great for. It has a coating on the bottom of the pan which prevents food from sticking to it. So the kinds of jobs, like I said, that you want to use this for are things that need to be cooked really gently that the, um, you're worried about sticking to the actual pan. This is not the pan that you want to use for high heat cooking. So if you're frying something or you're searing something, you don't want to use your nonstick pan for that. And there's a couple reasons why. First, um, when a when the Teflon or the whatever um, is used as the coating in your pan, usually it's Teflon. When the Teflon gets to a high temperature, it creates toxic fumes, and those are not good for your health. And you don't want those inside your body or inside your food. So you don't want to cook these at cook with this at a high temperature. And the other thing is that um, as that deteriorates, it means the life of your pan is shortened. So there's a couple things that you can do in order to make sure that your nonstick pan lasts longer. First, like I said, don't cook with it at high heat. The other thing is that you want to be gentle with it in pretty much all ways. You don't want to use metal utensils in it because that can scrape off the coating that will make it nonstick. Um, you don't want to use like... Um, those uh, I don't remember what it's called but the the scrapey thing that um, this little scouring board that you can use to clean pots and pans you don't want to use that inside of your non-stick pan um, because that can also scrape off the coating and um, you don't want to store other pans nested inside of this you want to make sure that it doesn't nothing is on the inside that might scrape off that coating because that will shorten the life of your non-stick pan making it less non-stick and then once things start to stick to it um, it doesn't really um, do the job that it's there for uh, eventually Eventually all non-stick pans do become non-stick and you have to replace them. That's just a part of having a non-stick pan, but you want to prevent that for as long as possible. 
So that is what you'll need to know with your nonstick pan. And like I said, it's really, really great for any kind of gentle jobs that you need, specifically eggs, cheese, if you're cooking fish and you want to cook that gently, it's really great in the nonstick. Nothing will stick to it. You don't have to worry about preheating that beforehand. Like with the stainless steel, you can just warm it up, put your ingredients inside, and then you don't have to worry at all about anything sticking to the inside of your pan, uh, as long as you take good care of your nonstick pan. The next one that we have is a cast iron skillet and I know for some people this is like uh, a little bit intimidating like looking at a cast iron skillet it's heavy duty and there's a lot of different myths about your cast iron skillet and how delicate they are they're like a flower that you have to be very very gentle with and you're always worried about them rusting or or falling apart or being um, you know a, a pan that you can't really use that often if they're not that versatile and I had that first um, inclination about cast iron skillets before I had one as well but I've actually learned through using it and reading more about it that you know, the, the cast iron skillet is super versatile and it's actually really really sturdy and durable you do not have to worry about being able to keep this and take take good care of it there are cast iron skillets that have been passed down for generations and generations they're hundreds of years old and they're really well made and they will last a really really long time so a cast iron skillet is not something that you have to be afraid of they're actually a really great tool in the kitchen and the thing about cast iron skillet what this is great for it's all about heat the cast iron skillet can get really really hot safely and it can hold on to that heat so anything that you're cooking in the kitchen where you want a lot of heat that is where the cast iron skillet will really really shine so if you are searing anything like a steak and you want to get that really beautiful crusty brown caramelized exterior on your steak the cast iron skillet is perfect if you are frying anything frying chicken um, something I fry in this a lot is I make homemade tortilla chips anything that you're frying a cast iron skillet is really great for if you're gonna do like a small batch and you don't have a big deep fryer the cast iron skillet is super great because it gets really really hot and like I said it will stay hot so that is what is really great about a cast iron skillet and um, the other nice thing about a cast iron is it's basically non-stick and the reason for that is that it has something called seasoning on it and the seasoning is not has absolutely nothing to do with seasoning like flavor of salt and pepper and all of those things it actually refers to um, the layer of polymerized oil that is on the surface of your cast iron skillet and so basically what it is is the cast iron skillet is um, covered with oil and then you heat it up really really hot and that starts to pull apart the molecules of the oil and they get into the, um, the pores of the cast iron skillet and it almost becomes like a plastic stick um, that will sit on the surface of your cast iron skillet and so when you cook with it the food can't get into the pores because that oil is sitting between the food and the actual cast iron skillet so it becomes like I said pretty much non-stick you can do any you can cook anything in here and you don't have to worry about it getting stuck to the bottom of your pan so um, in terms of when you're cleaning this the things to know um, it is metal and so it can rust but it's not really a big deal with thinking about rust the main things you just need to do is clean it out when you're done you can use soap and water in your cast iron skillet you just don't want to like soak it and have water sitting on it as soon as you're done cleaning it you want to wipe it out dry it out and then the next thing is you want to um, rub it down with oil and you can re-season it if you have time to do that and all that basically is is you rub it down with oil put it on the stove top, let it get really, really hot for about 10 minutes, and then you turn it off and put it away. Um, and I usually just leave mine on the stove top because then I can heat it up and then just put it on the back burner and let it cool down. So that's how you take care of a cast iron skillet. Um, like I said, great for frying chicken, frying anything. Um, if you're making cornbread, I love to bake my cornbread in here. You can bake um, all sorts of different um, kind of crumbles and pies and all of that kind of stuff. You can do that in your cast iron skillet. It is really, really versatile and a great tool to have in the kitchen. Let's see, next up we have a saucepan. And the saucepan is um, another one that you'll use all the time. It has lots of different jobs. Um, this one, it'll have tall straight sides on it. There's also a saucepan or a saucier, and that's kind of like the cousin of the saucepan. The saucier, instead of having straight sides, the sides slope down at the bottom, so it's wider at the top and more narrow at the bottom. And the advantage of a saucier is that um, if you are gonna whisk something, it's easier to get into those rounded edges um, versus having the straight edges. But both of them can do pretty much the same job so that you can choose either one. You don't necessarily have to have both a saucepan and a saucier. And the saucepan, 
um, a relatively large size. Um, I think if you have three to four quart size, that'll pretty much get you through all the jobs that you need. Again, long handle is also super important um, with this one, and you'll want to get one that comes with a lid, um, which makes it more versatile. You can do more things with it when it comes with a lid. And the thing um, that's great about the saucepan, it's more narrow, so that means when you put liquids in there, they're not going to evaporate as quickly. So if you want something to sit for a long time and you don't want to lose all of the liquid that comes in whatever you're cooking, then you want to use the saucepan because that will keep the liquid in there for much longer versus if some if you have a wider pot, there's more surface area, more of it's going to evaporate more quickly. So this is um, really ideal for sauces, obviously that makes a lot of sense, it's a saucepan, but it can do a lot more than just sauce in this pan. Um, I like making, we make uh, macaroni and cheese in this, you can cook oatmeal, um, hard boiled eggs if you're cooking grains or beans, like making quinoa, I made some sorghum this week, and that works really well in this pan. So anything that you want to sit on the stove top for a while, this is really great for something that might need to simmer for a long time. Um, if you're going to poach, um, like poaching eggs or poaching fruit or meat or anything like that, that's really great. This pan's really great for any of those kinds of jobs. And um, the thing is you want to make sure that the with the thickness of this, it's the same thickness on the sides as it is on the bottom. And that will ensure you get more even heat. So you don't want thinner sides and a more heavy base because the heat will not be evenly distributed throughout your pot. So that's one thing to look for in order to make sure um, that you have a good quality um, saucepan. And the next one that I have, it's a big boy, so I'm just gonna take, uh, move this over here. This one is your Dutch oven. The Dutch oven, it was developed in the Netherlands, hence the name of why it's called a Dutch oven. Now it's made out of cast iron or cast aluminum and it has as you can see, as I was lugging this up, it has a really heavy body um, and then it'll have a really um, nice, heavy, uh, tight fitting lid on top. And a good size for this one is like five to seven quarts in order to be able to fit as much food as you um, would typically want in a Dutch oven. I like this for making big batches of stuff. So you want to get a good size one so then it can hold big batches or it can hold like if you had a roast or something like that, it can hold a whole roast inside. You don't have to worry about having enough space for cooking like a nice big size piece of meat. Um, so this is ideal for ideal for things like a stew or a chili, baked dishes, like I said, uh, braising something, if you're roasting, those kinds of things, it can do a long, it can do really well inside of um, this kind of a pan. Uh, the nice thing about your Dutch oven, it resists sticking and rust. So this is um, one that will stick with you for the long haul. One thing to know, this is a specialty item. So if you buy like a pot and pan set, you're not going to find a Dutch oven um, included within like large sets. You're going to have to buy this separately and it is a bit more of an investment. Um, but I've seen them, they range anywhere from, you can probably find them from like 80 to hundred dollars and then on the high end more like $300. Um, so it is an investment piece, but like I said, it's a one that I use it all the time. We cook a ton of food on the weekends to last us for the whole week. And this thing, I pull it out every week. I make curries in here. Um, I make all sorts of rice dishes. I made like a biryani in here a couple weeks ago. So this is a dish that gets a ton and ton of use, especially if you're going to cook large um, portions of food and um, this is great for like a one pot meal so you can fit everything in here as you can see it's very large you can fit a lot of stuff in there um, and it is really versatile does lots of really great jobs especially if you're making um, big batches of food so those are the five primary pots and pans that I think are super important to have in your kitchen I have one more bonus one that um, I use relatively frequently it kind of it switches off between using my Dutch oven and this other pot which is my large stock pot and the stock pot is basically um, it's a large pot for all the big jobs that you have in the kitchen it will hold anywhere from 8 to 10 quarts of contents in this one I can see pretty large um, if you're entertaining or if you want to meal prep for the week this dish is really great for that because again it can do a really large quantity and um, if you have like a big batch of something that you want to make like you want to make a bunch of tomato sauce or if you're making like chili and stuff like that if you're 
cooking seafood and you need a big pot to be able to boil water to toss your seafood in, the big stock pot is really great for those jobs as well. And the things that you want to look for with your um, stock pot is obviously you want want the size but the other thing is like with the saucepan if you want to make sure that the sides have the same thickness as the bottom so that it will have even heat conduction throughout the entire pot and um, something else that you can use this for is if you're steaming things you can stick steam baskets inside so you just want to make sure if you have steam baskets that the diameter of your stock pot um, will fit your steam baskets so that they can go inside but this is one that I turn to a lot if you're making like homemade um, stock or broth you can make that in this pot super Super great for anything that you're going to make a large quantity of because you got a lot more pot. So those are the five pots and pans that you need and that you'd actually use plus a little bonus one. So I'll go over those one more time really quickly just so that you have them all. The first one, the most important one, is your frying pan, saute pan, um, the stainless steel pan. This one can do lots of different jobs. It's a great one pot pan. Um, it has tall sides, which means you can do sauced stuff inside of it. It also can accommodate high heat. It can go from the stove top into the oven. Great for searing stuff, great for braising things. Things, and like I said for making saucy things if you're making like a pasta or something that's a super great dish for making like a pasta dish you can throw, toss your pasta in there with your tomato sauce all your other ingredients and it'll be all done in one pot so a really really helpful one to have in the kitchen the next one is your nonstick skillet this one is essential for anything that sticks in the kitchen things like eggs um, cheesy dishes quesadillas frittatas crepes anything that's gonna stick to the pan you want to get your nonstick skillet out because it will gently cook all of those things and prevent a mess in the end so this one's super important but remember it's not for those high heat jobs so you don't want to do things like searing and frying in your nonstick skillet because it will deteriorate the protective coating that's on there that makes it nonstick so make sure you just use it for the gentle jobs next if you do want to cook things at high heat that's where you pull out your cast iron skillet this is the one that's all about heat it will get really really hot and it will stay really hot so you can use this one on the stovetop you can use it in the oven it's great for searing things it's great for frying things and it will last you a lifetime it's a really really great pot um, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money you can go to a garage sale and find like an old one from you know the 1920s or something and it will still be just as great actually probably better than the ones you can get in the store now because the construction of pots and pans from back in the day um, was phenomenal so getting an old one is actually a really great idea if you can find one and the one thing to know is if you are using a pot like this and you're wiping um, I mentioned wiping it down with oil to can, to ensure the seasoning stays on there. You want to make sure you're using an oil that can go to a high heat. Not all oils are meant for cooking at a high heat. Some oils will break down at the higher temperatures. So for instance, olive oil is really great when you're cooking at a medium heat, but it's not intended for high heat. So you want to get an oil that won't break down. Um, one that I have is sunflower oil. And you can see on the packaging right there, it says on the bottom, high heat so a lot of the oils i've noticed now they will tell you on the packaging what they what kind of heat they're intended for so this sunflower oil high heat this is one that i like for um, cooking with um, vegetable oil is another one that's good for high heat corn oil peanut oil so those are some options if you're gonna cook um, in a cast iron skillet and you need to see re-season it using those kinds of oils those are the kinds of oils that you'd also want to cook with if you're cooking at a high heat and if you are um, frying anything those are the kinds of oils that you want to use ones that won't break down and um, I, I'm, I don't know all of the health reasons why you don't want them to break down, but basically when the oil breaks down, it has um, some negative properties. I think they talk about like free radicals and stuff like that. So you don't want any of that stuff. So make sure that you use an oil that is intended for high heat. Um, the uh, fourth pan, sorry, but fourth pan is your so saucepan. Uh, the saucepan, again, you want one that is has high sides and even um, metal distribution so the sides are the same as the bottom and that will make sure that you can stick this on the stovetop for hours and hours to simmer away and it will have even heat distribution and um, this one is really great for making obviously sauces but all sorts of dishes that you want to sit on the stovetop poaching um, if you're creating soups and stews and stuff like that in a small portion you can also do that in these grains uh, rice all of that kind of stuff 
can be done really easily with your saucepan. The fifth one is your Dutch oven, the big boy, your nice hefty one. This great, this one is really great. Like I said, if you're making large batches, if you're making soups, stews, if you're braising something, that's what you want to use your Dutch oven for. This one is another one that can also go from the stovetop into the oven, um, onto the dining room table. It's really, really great one to invest in. It won't come in your normal pots and pans sets, but it's worth having one of these because it can do a lot of jobs and it will last you a lifetime. And the final one is your bonus, your stock pot. This is a great one to have if you have a big family or if you're going to be cooking large quantities of something, for instance, tomato sauce, or you're making um, stock or something like that where you want to be able to make a large quantity are you cooking seafood if you're having you know seafood boil you want a big pot that can hold, accommodate all of that food so that's another one to have on hand if you um, want to be cooking in larger quantities so those are the five pots and pans that you need in your kitchen and how you would actually use them what are the jobs that they're intended for and how you can get the best results out of each of them so that you don't have to worry about um, big messes in the kitchen and you can also make sure that your food turns out superbly every single time so uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that was helpful for all of you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a message um, on, under this video or you can send me a private message if you want to know more about the pots and pans that you have in your kitchen too. You're like, um, how am I supposed to actually use this pan? Why do I have this pan sitting in my house? Uh, feel free to send me a message. I have, have lots of pots and pans in my houses. Most of them, thankfully, I actually do use, but every now and then I go into the cupboard and I realize I have a potter pan somebody gifted me and and I haven't used it ever so um, I totally understand and, and feel your frustration when you head into the cupboard and you're like why do I have all of these different gadgets and gizmos in my kitchen so feel free to send me a message if you have any questions I would love to answer them have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy the rest of your weekend bye